patient hearing and I'm very Thank you, Shilpa Joshi and the iTech team for giving me this opportunity. And after a feast of caffeine, quinoa, cornflakes, and various other things, and with a lot of interruptions, I start my session on herbal meal replacers or supplements. I think even if we are pe feeding people a lot of food, they still need some supplements and replacers just to pep up and also to do better. I come from the background of sports nutrition, so I deal with a lot of people, athletes coming to me who ask me a lot of things like supplements. So I'll just focus a little bit and I'm trying to make my talk very crisp. Uh, so herbal meal replacers, you must have come across a lot of products that are available in the market and people are buying supplements. And since the pandemic, I think more and more people have come, have various startups are coming up and they have started buying and also making supplements on their own. So what are dietary supplements? Basically, it is something that you add on to your regular diet and it contains some ingredients that can provide you with additional health benefits. And there are different types of supplements coming from uh, multivitamin supplements, protein supplements, and we also have her meal replacers, something that can take care of your meals when you're out. But now some of the people have actually replaced their regular meals with meal replacers. Now these are basically calorie controlled prepackaged bars or beverages that replace a regular meal and they may contain certain added herbs or botanicals to ha give them a special edge or some benefit. Herbal supplements are there since ages. We have a lot of herbs which are there in our culinary as well as we have a lot of herbal uh, day to day, even at home we get advice from a lot of our own uh, family members to use different kinds of herbs for some rem uh, or home remedies. So herbal supplements are basically plant or plant extracts that are consumed other than calorie or culinary benefits. And nutraceuticals are food components which have a potential to cure a specific disease conditions or uh, also provide certain medical benefits. So it's observed that the Indian dietary supplement market has really increased a lot, especially in the past two years. So it is very common for us to uh, see clients who say, I am taking Limsi, I am taking calcium, I am taking iron. They are taking and popping pills as just because for to be safe from any kind of illness and more so with the COVID. So the Indian Dietary Market Supplement Survey indicates that in 94% of the Indians are worried about their family health and consumers have opened their wallets to consume natural foods. They look for something that is natural, that is organic, that is safe health supplements and also nutraceuticals. And it is uh, reported that the market is going to reach around 847.9 billion by 2027. So you, it's a very huge market. And with having different kinds of marketing avenues open to everyone, when you open your social media accounts, before you think of something, that product will be there on your uh, whatever social media account. So you may wonder, I was going to think or search on this, but it's already in front of me. So that is something which is now picking up in the Indian market and we have a lot of nutraceuticals and meal replacers or supplements available in the market. I don't know, it's not moving. Okay, thank you. So uh, what are the different types of herbal supplements? Uh, the different types of herbal supplements are basically classified into four major types. I, the supplement brands are the overall availability of supplements is huge, but the major supplements that are available in the market are 
weight loss supplements, bodybuilding supplements, sports supplements, and also immunity boosters, which have come up in the last two years. So basically, what are herbal supplements? They are used since um, ages, in time immemorial. And the sources for herbal supplements are basically plant, roots, leaves, seeds, barks, and moss. And herbs are said to be the precursors for the drugs that are used in modern medicine or plant-based medicine. And the function of these herbal supplements is that how do these supplements work is they work as adaptogens and that help the body to adapt to the physiological stress and also normalize body functions. So the main supplements we are going to look at are review regarding what are the effects. Now you must have come across a lot of uh, reports which say that after consuming a weight loss meal replacer, there were certain side effects which were noticed um, among the patients or clients or liver toxicity is something which is very commonly observed and in case of sports inadvertent doping is something which occurs because of the consumption of lot of herbal supplements so here is a review uh, herbal medicine for the treatment of obesity it is a review which review uh, reviews all the studies related to use of certain herbal medicines or replacers from 2007 to 2017 and what are the uh, supplement herbs that I use is ephedra, garcinia, gugul, which is a very, very original Ayurvedic uh, herb, which is also called as medhari gugul, then ginseng, rhizoma, the list is long. And the possible or purported benefits or effects are basically after giving these herbs or herbal supplements, there is definite impact on the body weight, there's body, body weight loss, there is improved HP1C level, increased satiety, and also it helps in um, reducing the fasting insulin level and a lot of improvement in BMI and WHR ratio is also observed in most of the studies which were uh, reviewed in this article. And some of the adverse effects noted in uh, were gastric issues, skin rashes, nausea, headache, fatigue, dizziness, and sleep issues. And the conclusion statement of this review was that there is a need for increased clinical trials. And also, when we review these papers, there, are, there is no standardized procedure. And also, the composition that is used for uh, these herbal meal replacers is not uniform. So there's no set composition. So you cannot identify what ingredient is actually going to cause that possible effect of having a positive effect on obesity or weight loss and safety norms are generally not followed regarding the clinical trials as well as whatever supplements or herbal uh, products are available in the market. So herbal re meal replacers, although a lot of products are available, thermogenic effects specifically for weight loss are used. And these brands are very popular brands and they have, uh, without telling the name, I think the audience will understand that there are certain brands which are commonly used and uh, they contain a lot of herbs like uh, ephedra, agilene, uh, Camellia sinensis, and they also have hepatotoxic effect, uh, and there are cases of liver uh, failure and transplants. And bodybuilding, the list is endless. There are so many side effects uh, because they are consuming, especially in bodybuilding, they are not only consuming the herbal supplements, but they are also popping in a lot of protein supplements and multivitamins. So basically they are taking cocktail of supplements and that has, there is one case which is reported uh, on a uh, hepatic failure in a woman bodybuilder who was actually taking a cocktail of supplements where she was having different kinds of meal replacers. Plus there was protein, there was multivitamins, there was omega-3. So in spite of, uh, there, in, there is no need for consumption of all this, but because she's instructed by a coach or a trainer, the, she was consuming these different kinds of supplements and she had severe effects on the liver. Sports supplements is again something which is uh, contaminated and it may contain something called as DMA. A, which is also obtained from geranium plants and it is basically used in a pre-workout supplement just to give you a boost when, when you work out. And uh, the results are uh, like the harmful effects of consuming these kinds of products which may contain certain herbs are like elevated blood pressure, then tachycardia, nausea, vomiting, these are some of the supplements. So uh, supplement side effects and one more thing to note is that 
be aware of the combination of supplements that the individual takes and avoid a cocktail of supplements in, uh, in your daily uh, life. Then, how do you address the major pitfalls uh, in this particular industry? So basically, there is a need of a lot of research on these herbal supplements. Controlled clinical trials are required. And it is also important to identify the mechanisms of the biological activity of how they are going. We have a wealth of supplements. We have wealth of herbs like ashwagandha. We have so many other products that are available, like shilajit is there, which is used for improving the testosterone levels and also specially used in bodybuilding and all that. But we do not have any documentation about how these products will behave in your body when you are consuming them for a long, pe long period of time and also whether it is going to have any toxic effects because they are just um, passed on from one person to another like the coach is telling the ath uh, athletes and everybody. So toxicity trials about these herbs and the drug, introduction, uh, drug interactions is very important because a lot of time people or the consumers or the um, patients do not disclose uh, certain things that they are consuming because they feel that it is herbal and it is safe. So we also come across a lot of products which have come uh, in the market with a very quick launch period that it's just a recipe is developed and it comes to the market. So most of this industry is market driven and without evidence we have a lot of products available in the market. So in case of regulatory meat, meat, uh, whatever pitfalls are there, there are a lot of unregistered products and also there is adverse event reporting is missing. So people are consuming but it's not reported even if there are side effects not reported and many products are available over the counter so people or consumers do buy them. Third participant a certification is required for them for proper regulation so that the entire whatever product the, it contains or what is the composition will be known and we need strict guidelines from FDA and F FSSI and FSSI has now started something which is called as uh, foods for special dietary use which is a new logo which will be coming to uh, which will be on these kinds of products which are used for performance benefits and also cross contamination of the different products uh, is likely to occur now your how time is up please yes, consumer gets just one minute consumer gets convinced with multi level marketing and uh, different herbs are used because they feel that it is safe it is natural and uh, Consumer always uh, neglects this to disclose, like the, he will not be disclosing it to the practitioners. So the way forward is what the health practitioner should be doing. Be aware that large fraction of general population takes supplements. Request information to provide optimal care and consent and assessment forms should have these columns whether you are taking any herb or dietary supplements. And patient education is very important. From the consumer's perspective, Seek professional advice. Herbs, natural, organic is not always safe. And declare or disclose what you are consuming uh, to the health practitioner. Read labels carefully. And also do not get carried away by some unauthorized claims like weight loss, quick weight loss, muscle building, immunity boosters, or performance enhancers, or sexual enhancement. So these are some of the things and the salient features or how do we handle these situations uh, regarding the herbal meal replacers and supplements that are available in the market. Thank you.